Welcome to another video in chemistry. In this video we're going to be discussing amounts of reactants and products. So as we go into this video, uh, there's two fundamental questions or types of questions that will be asked in your labs and in your textbooks. How much product will be formed from specific amounts of starting materials or the reactants? Okay, so that's your first question. How much product will be formed? So if you have a specific amount of reactants, of elements, okay, how much will you actually produce uh, after the reaction has taken place? The other question to consider is how much starting material must be used to obtain a specific amount of product? So when you're doing a lab, okay, when you're doing chemical work, you might just need a, very, a specific amount of a product. So knowing how much you need will help to determine how much you actually need to start off with. That way you don't have a lot of waste product. Okay, so these are the types of fundamental questions you'll, you'll have to know and understand how to uh, achieve these answers in your lab and in your textbook. Okay, so applying all of our knowledge of molar mass and the mole concept. So the previous six, seven videos that we've done up to this point for this concept, all of these concepts will be rolled up, all of these skills will be used up in, uh, in the problems that we're going to be dealing with in this video. The specific math that we're dealing with in this video is called stoichiometry. This is a quantitative study of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. So applying all of our knowledge of molar mass and the mole concept. So as I mentioned before, everything that we've looked up up to this point, um, we're going to need to take those tools out of our tool belt to help us to solve these problems. All right, so as we proceed in working out these problems, there's a particular method that we're going to discuss. It's called the mole method. And what this mole method means is the stoichiometric coefficients, okay, so the coefficients you remember are the numbers in front of your uh, elements or compounds. So it means that the stoichiometric coefficients in the chemical equation can be interpreted as the number of moles in each substance. Okay, so this would be a perfect ideal situation or theoretical um, problem. Of course chemistry is a little bit messier than that. There's usually going to be when you're doing some kind of chemical reaction there's typically uh, it's typical to have some a waste product or maybe you didn't have quite have enough reactants to produce the amount of product that you want. It's not a perfect science. Okay, But with these problems, with these chemical equations these offer us a, a really close um, theoretical yield and a really close number that we can use as a baseline to start off how much material we need to start off with or how much material we need to end up with. This, is, this will give us a theoretical yield. Okay, So theoretically for this particular um, combination of elements, this chemical equation, you're going to have one mole of nitrogen and that's what that coefficient, that one represents one mole of nitrogen. So that means there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay. And in this chemical equation, when I, my coefficient 3 means that there's 3 moles of hydrogen. So that's Avogadro's number, and since there's 3 of them, I want to multiply that number by 3. right? So on my product side, I have 2 moles of ammonia. Okay, So that means I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23, Avogadro's number, and I multiply that out by 2 because there's 2 moles of them. Okay, So again, the mole method means that the stoichiometric coefficients in the chemical equation can be interpreted as a number of moles of each substance. Okay, This is very, very important um, in the working of stoichiometric problems. So each of these coefficients in any of the chemical equations that I see represents the number of actual moles that I have in that equation. So uh, if you go back to a couple of videos prior to this one, uh, this this idea tells you how important it is to be able to balance our equations, okay, and to make sure we have balanced equations. So you could read this out as one mole of nitrogen, uh, one mole of nitrogen gas combines the plus sign with three moles of hydrogen gas to form two moles of ammonia gas. Okay, and that should actually say NH2, not NH, uh, NH3, not NH2. Okay, so they're stoichiometrically equivalent. So what that means is that we have molar ratios, okay? We have conversion factors, and these are going to play a very, very important role in determining how much product I yield or how much reactant I need to yield a certain amount of product. 
So in other words, um, my ratios for nitrogen to hydrogen are going to be a three to one ratio. So depending on what the information what information I need, uh, the two ratios that you see there at the bottom are the two ones that I can use. Okay. So if I want to compare nitrogen to ammonia, well these are the ratios. It's a one to two ratio. For every one mole of nitrogen, I have two moles of ammonia. Or for every two moles of ammonia, I have one mole of nitrogen. And like goes, it goes either way. So again, to comparing hydrogen to ammonia, uh, to nitrogen, it's a three to one ratio. And there I have my two possible conversion factors. Now, which one of these conversion factors will I need? Well, it all, de it all depends on what I'm looking for, what unit I have as a given, and what unit I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to get. And as I work some of these problems out, you'll see how, how this actually plays out. So, so again, it, it works for all of these conversion factors. Okay, so let's consider a simple example in which six moles of hydrogen react completely with nitrogen to form ammonia. All right, so the question is, how much ammonia is formed, right? How much is formed when I have six moles of hydrogen? And this is a really good example of uh, what, would happen in a, what would happen in a chemistry lab, is that you might have a specific amount of reactant, and you want to find out, if I have six moles of this reactant, then how much will I actually produce in, uh, as, as a product? Now, theoretically, well, actually, let's go ahead and just work it out. Well, if I look at my, my uh, chemical equation, theoretically, if I have one mole of nitrogen, okay, or three moles of hydrogen, then I will make two moles of ammonia, right? That's my theoretical yield. That's my ideal yield in a perfect environment. Now, experimentally, if I have six moles, if I look at my hydrogen, at three moles, for every three moles of hydrogen, I produce two moles of ammonia. So if I have six moles, that's double, and it stands the reason that I'll create double the amount of ammonia. Well, let's work that out mathematically to confirm that. So my given is six moles of hydrogen, right? And I know that my, I know that I want to get to ammonia. So the direct line of communication, if you were my transfer ticket that gets me from point A to point B, is my mole ratio. And since I want to get rid of the unit mole of hydrogen, I want my mole of hydrogen to be in a denominator position, right? So then the appropriate ratio to use would be a 2 to 3 ratio, 2 moles of ammonia to 3 moles of hydrogen, or 3 moles of hydrogen to 2 moles of ammonia. Because then that will help me get rid of the unit of mole of hydrogen, and it will help me get the mole of ammonia. And now that's left to do is for me to do my math, which is 6 times 2 thirds, which, in, which ends up being 4 moles of ammonia. And if you remember previously, I kind of did mental math here, realizing that if I have six moles of hydrogen, and for every three moles of hydrogen, I make two moles of ammonia, if I double the amount of hydrogen I have, then I know that I'll double the amount of product that I'll yield as well, okay? So some of these problems you can use mental math, um, but I would say it's, it's just good practice for you to do this so that you can um, know the procedure and eventually you'll get the hang of it where mental math will be all you need. But in any case, uh, this is the way I confirm that, yes, indeed, I do make four moles of ammonia with six moles of hydrogen. All right. Now, let's do one that's a little bit more involved. Suppose that I have 16 grams of hydrogen, and it reacts completely with uh, nitrogen to form ammonia. How many grams of ammonia will be formed? All right. So, I need to get my grams of hydrogen to become grams of ammonia. So here's my point A and I need to get to point B and there's no real direct conversion factor of grams of hydrogen to grams of ammonia. So what I need to do is I need to find the links that do exist and I do have one link. If I look at my uh, chemical equation again, I know that there's a link between hydrogen and ammonia and that's my mole ratios. That's the stoichiometry of this that we were talking about. Okay, So these units are in moles. That's the problem when my given units are in grams. So I need to go from grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, and then when I get moles of hydrogen, I can use my chemical equation to then use those ratios to get moles of ammonia. But again, my, my, my answer has to be in grams of ammonia, so then I'll need to convert moles of ammonia into grams of ammonia. All right, so that's, I'm, I'm laying out the groundwork, you know, so you can hopefully see at the top, um, 
the process uh, that I'm going to go through to get to my final answer, which is grams of ammonia. All right. So my given is in grams of hydrogen, right? I need to convert that to moles because moles is, is my, my main ticket here, my uh, transfer ticket to get to ammonia. So I need to convert my grams of hydrogen into moles of hydrogen. And I know that uh, my molar mass of hydrogen is 1.008, and since there's two hydrogens, then it's 2.016. So for one mole of hydrogen, right, it's 2.016. I do the math, my units cancel, and I end up with 7.937 moles of hydrogen. So that's the number of moles that I have for hydrogen. So 16 grams of hydrogen gives me almost 8 moles of hydrogen. All right. Now, I want to go from moles of hydrogen to moles of ammonia. So what's my transfer, if you will, my transfer ticket? What's my conversion factor that I need to get from moles of hydrogen to moles of ammonia? Okay. And I want my unit of moles of hydrogen to cancel out, so I want that to be in my denominator position, right? So my units will cancel. I do my math. 7.937 times 2 thirds, that's 5.29 moles of ammonia. And I'm just a step closer now. So now I have moles of ammonia, but my answer needs to be in grams of ammonia, right? So I need to find the conversion factor to get from moles to grams. So one mole of ammonia is the molar mass of ammonia which is 17.03. So uh, the way I found that, if you can go back to previous videos to find how I found find molar mass of a compound, it's basically the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14.01, uh, 14 I believe. And then hydrogen is 1.008 times 3, because there's three hydrogens. Add those up together, and uh, you end up with 17.03 uh, grams. That's the molar mass of one mole of ammonia. So that will help me to get rid of the unit of moles and to get grams. And my final answer will be, with 5.29 times 17.03, it is 90.1 grams of ammonia. All right, so that's my answer. I've converted grams of hydrogen to grams of ammonia. So with 16 grams of hydrogen on my reactant side, after my chemical reaction occurs, I will produce 90.1 grams of ammonia, okay? And that's that problem for, uh, for amounts of reactants and products. And uh, in my next video, I will do another problem that's similar to these so you can get uh, another look at how these problems can be solved. Good luck in your studying.